Today we're going to be doing some mole to mole calculation practice. And you are going to need a balanced chemical equation for this every single time. If you see, as I'm reading through this problem, how many moles of sodium chloride are required to produce 18 moles of chlorine. If you see two different uh, molecules, you're going to need an equation and you're going to need to have balanced that equation. I have my balanced equation already set up and I'm just gonna work on the actual uh, stoic portion where I am going from uh, one compound type to a completely different compound type. So I'm gonna go ahead and start here. So this question states how many moles, and so I'm always gonna translate my English to my math, which means I'll translate how many into X moles and then compound desired is gonna be sodium chloride. R required to produce is my English for equals. And then number given in the problem, which is 18 moles of chlorine. So now that I have the two compounds that I am interested in, I will go ahead and find them in my actual chemical equation. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just visually connect them. And that's just to help me make sure that I am uh, establishing the ratio between the correct compounds. So then I need to establish my uh, fraction style ratios for sodium chloride to chlorine. What I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna take the coefficient in front of the actual compound. So in front of sodium chloride, it's two. And then instead of going from just two molecules of sodium chloride, I'm gonna go up to two moles of sodium chloride. And for every two moles of sodium chloride, there is one, remember invisible coefficients are one, there is one mole of chlorine. Or for every one mole of chlorine, there are two moles of sodium chloride. And again, I just kind of flipped that fraction. So now that I have my ratios already kind of figured out, I can look at my actual problem and figure out which of these two ratios I need. So right now I see that I have 18 moles of chlorine on the top of my dimensional analysis train track, which means to cancel out moles of chlorine, I need to have it on the opposite side. So since it's currently on the top, that means I need it on the bottom. So I'll look between the two different ratios and I'll find the one that is on the bottom. And then I will go ahead and do that, so that is going to be one mole of chlorine on the bottom and two moles of sodium chloride on the top. Moles um, chlorine will cancel, leaving me with moles of sodium chloride, which is the unit that I wanted, so I know that I'm done. And I can go ahead and just multiply 18 by two, and 18 times two will give me 36. And then only English left in my math is moles of sodium chloride. And that's going to be my final boxed answer. So pretty easy. Once you actually kind of realize what needs to happen and you have that balanced chemical equation, this is very quick. It's pattern recognition again. As long as you know exactly what you're going to need, this is a, a relatively quick and easy type of problem to solve. So now I have a new balanced chemical equation. I have a aluminum bromide being reacted with potassium sulfate, producing potassium bromide and aluminum sulfate. And then I'm gonna read my question. I'm gonna translate it from English to math. So it says how many moles? So I know I'm gonna say X moles. And then it says potassium sulfate. R needed to is going to be my equal sign and then number given in the problem. So nine moles of aluminum sulfate. And uh, now I can go ahead and see very clearly the two compounds that I care about. So that's going to be potassium sulfate and aluminum sulfate. And I can go ahead and visually connect those and establish my ratios. So I see that I have for every three moles of potassium sulfate. And again, all I'm doing is just taking this coefficient here and then just sticking the word mole in. That's all I'm doing. Uh, to every one mole, remember that invisible coefficients are ones of aluminum sulfate. 
and then I'm flipping that ratio. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and see which I actually need to use. So I'll establish my train track. I currently have moles of aluminum sulfate on the top, which means I need the ratio with moles of aluminum sulfate on the bottom. So that will be that top one again. And then I'll go ahead and plug it in. Moles of aluminum sulfate will cancel since I have it on the top and the bottom, leaving me with moles of potassium sulfate, which was my Unit. desire. So I know that I am actually done. So then I will go ahead and plug this into the calculator. I will multiply everything on the top and divide by everything on the bottom. Nine times three is going to give me the number 27. And then only English left in my math is going to be mole of potassium sulfate. And uh, that will be my final box answer. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to this very last problem here. It is going to be the combustion of methane. And so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, read through my actual problem and then translate my English to math. So this is how many moles of O2? So that's going to be X mole O2 are required to completely react or my equal sign. And then I have my number in my question, which is going to be 3.6 moles of methane, CH4. Then I can go ahead and uh, visually connect oxygen and methane, the only two compounds I care about. I do not care about carbon dioxide or water in this reaction at all. And I can go ahead and establish my ratios there. So I have that for every one mole of CH4, there will be two moles of oxygen required, or for every two moles of oxygen, I need one mole of CH4. Now that I have this, I can go ahead and establish which of the two ratios I need. And so I have currently the unit moles of methane, mole CH4 on the top, which means to cancel this out, I need mole CH4 on the bottom. So that means that this bottom fraction is going to be the one that I care about and the one that I'm going to use and I'll go ahead and plug it in. So for every two moles of oxygen I need one mole of CH4. Mole CH4 will cancel giving me moles of oxygen which is the unit that I said that I wanted so that means I'm done and I can go ahead and plug it in. Um, I would like to point out that for every one of these problems that we've done, I know that we're always dividing by one, which isn't going to really affect our math. This is not actually uh, required or the thing that will always happen. So I just want you to be aware of that. So whenever I would plug this into the calculator, I am going to actually just say like 3.6 times two divided by one, just in case this one is a different number. Just kind of get used to being able to divide by something other than one. It just so happened that the problem set um, were chosen here, ended up always dividing by one. That is not the rule and it is not the thing that always has to happen. Uh, 3.6 when multiplied by two, is going to give me 7.2 and then only English left in my math is going to be moles of oxygen and so that would be my final boxed answer and I'm done.